Okay, so what's this amazing symbol pi? Well, pi, if I can draw the circle reasonably well, is uh, the ratio of the circumference of the circle uh, to its diameter. So that's what pi is, and we all know that it's 3.14159 2 and now I'm struggling. I think it's, if you get this, I think it's a very good te test of geekiness. I think if you can only write pi down to uh, six significant figures, you're, you're not really very much of a geek. But if you can go four or five beyond this, this increases your level of geekiness. Lawrence, so I, I would have a lot of respect for you, but you are a geek. <laughs> I, do, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it important? Well, if you're uh, making a circular building, it's pretty important for knowing bricks, uh, how many bricks you've got to use, um, and for all sorts of geometrical problems. I mean, pi just doesn't come in for the problem of a circle, it gives us the 4 pi r squared gives us the surface area of the sphere, and 4 thirds pi r cubed gives us the volume of the sphere. So those are very useful numbers to know that when we're doing problems in physics and engineering. In your normal work, yeah. how often do you use pi? Oh, I should think I use it every day, two or three times a day probably, yeah. And so there are many problems in physics and astronomy and so on. Uh, that in which we're dealing with things like spheres. So the proton, for example, is about one of the smallest spheres that we can measure to any level of precision and understand. We understand it very well, and its charge and the electric field lines come out of it. So we need to know the geometry of uh, the circle that encloses the surface of, of, of something like a proton. And of course, the, 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 the moon and the Earth and the sun, most of the planets, to a good approximation, are also spheres. And uh, when we're doing problems about with them, atmospheric problems and things like this. Again, the size of the sphere is really important. So it crops up in just about every problem in science. I'm a physicist, uh, and uh, it's mathematicians who have really been fascinated and worked for a long time on pi and thought about it. And uh, I guess one of the things we learn in school that to a reasonable approximation, a reasonable approximation of this number is actually 22 upon 7. Now, it doesn't give us the ratio of the circumference to the diameter that accurately, but it's a pretty, pretty good approximation. If you put that into a calculator, you can compare how it, what its value is to, to, the, to the precise value of, of pi. But mathematicians have been fascinated uh, at the prospect of trying to, to, to express pi as a sum of integers or fractions of integers, and uh, there are various ways of doing this. And I think one of the most remarkable ones uh, is this, that pi by 4, now pi is 3.14, so pi by 4 is around about 0.8. And it turns out that uh, pi by 4 can be written uh, in terms of an infinite series. And I'll see if I can get this right. So it's 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth on and on and on to infinity. So we've got an infinite series. This infinite series here is giving us this value of pi. If we go on for long enough, adding more and more terms, we'll get the value of pi. Where are these numbers? How can I remember this so easily? Well, I start off with 1, and I know that 1 is bigger than pi by 4. So I'll take off uh, a third, uh, and that's, a, that's a, an odd, odd integer. But that then makes the number too small. So I'll now add a fifth, and then I'll take off a, a, a seventh, and then I'll add another one over an odd integer, and so on, ad, ad infinitum. Now, I brought along a couple of other series. I mean, there are, there are uh, other series that people like uh, Euler and so on have developed, and uh, I think I can remember these as well, but they take a bit of time to write that. This is another rather beautiful series. Uh, pi squared, which is about 10, but if you want to calculate pi, you can do it this way. Pi squared divided by 6 is given by 1 upon the square of the first integer, and then 1 upon 2 squared plus 1 upon 3 squared, again up to infinity. So it's another one of these infinite series. And uh, this is another one for pi by 2, where now instead of adding an infinite series of terms, we take here a numerator, which goes on multi multiplied forever. So we've got 2 times 2 times 4 times 4 times 6 times 6 in the numerator. And the denominator's got, denominator's got 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. Uh, times 7 pi 7, and both of those are going on for infinity, and that gives you pi by 2, which is, of course, pi by 2 being uh, the angle of a, 
a right angle triangle. So that angle there, of course, is the famous pi by two.